Welcome to Tribe Stories. My name is Aaron Mashano, entrepreneur and chief of the Tribe Hut. And each month we bring you an inspiring person or a message with a hope to equip, connect and collaborate with you to help you on your journey to doing remarkable things. Thanks for spending some time with me today and thank you so much for finding our tribe. Now let the sharing begin. So today I'd love to introduce the infamous and probably one of the biggest hearts I know here in Bali. Her name is Ibu Sari. She's the founder and CEO of PKP Community Center, where at least from my personal experience, I've seen her equip, connect and collaborate with women with disadvantages in local communities in her village in Selassie and other areas. And she's just been a really great spokeswoman who's also been recognized and nominated as Mother of the Year for amongst many titles. So Ibu Sari, thank you very much for uh, making the time to uh, attend our Trump Stories today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. So I thought it would be nice uh, in case people don't know much of you, maybe you could uh, just give us a little quick introduction as to how did you get the name Ibu Sari? Because we know in Bali it has many different ways of having identity and names. <laughs> but how does Ibu Sari become a brand in itself? So when I talk to other local people in Bali who are mothers, which is Ibu means or oh, they are Sari, but they say, oh, Ibu Sari, yes, we know her. So how did you come up with that name and how did it become a brand? Well, thank you. Thank you for the good question. <laughs> and yeah, my, my real name, not my real, Ibusari is also a real name. My full name is Ni Komang Sariadi. Uh, Ni, uh, Ni and I is um, the first uh, letter, letters uh, for uh, women or female, while I or E is for male. So this is how the local uh, divided the gender. And Komang, Komang is the, um, what is it called? The third, the third name, the third child, not the third name, the third child in, um, uh, the lowest, the lowest uh, case of uh, Balinese, uh, Balinese society. So, Ni Komang, uh, you will definitely understood that Ni is old, even without you seeing, seeing the person. If uh, the name start with Ni and I, it must be female, female person. And Komang is the third, as everyone might know or who don't know. So the first, the first child is Wayan. Uh, that's the original name. Uh, Putu is the modern name. <laughs> and the second name is Made. Uh, modern name is Kade for the second child. And the third one is Nyoman. Nyoman and modern name is Komang. So I'm Ni Komang. Sari Adi, so that's my last name. And uh, everyone are well known as Ibu Sari because I love to be called Ibu. Uh, it's coming from my own experiences. Uh, Ibu means mother. Ibu means um, woman. Uh, we honor uh, women by calling them Ibu and also for those uh, women who married and having child we usually call name uh, call them by their uh, name of their first son or first child so for example like if I have a son or daughter named Eva my first child, then uh, people called me Ibu Eva, or according to 
uh, the first child of uh, the women. So I'd love to, no, I always love to call Ibu. Again, it's coming from my own experiences because I unable to heard this word Ibu means mama or mother from my own child, which I could not uh, raised by my own uh, for almost 17 years. So yeah, I've been, I've been missing, I've been missing this um, label, <laughs> this label Ibu, <laughs> this called, this name Ibu. So that is the reason, one of the reasons, uh, the main reason why I'd love everyone to call me Ibu. Mm. Wow, that's a very beautiful story. And I think I like the uh, analogy of how Balinese culture name the mothers after their first child. And uh, coincidentally, it's exactly the same in Africa. So we say Bana Yunis, which is my mother, who was called Bana Yunis because my sister was the first born. So I find those parallels really interesting. So what were the topic of branding and how you are famously known as Ibusari? Uh, maybe you could tell us a bit about PKP, uh, why that name came up and what does it mean? And, you know, why, why did you choose to uh, get involved in community sector? Because I know your background, you're a teacher, what, uh, chefing or cooking background, you have so many skills, but you picked to do community okay. work. So could you tell us a bit more about why PKP and also why you chose to uh, commit your life to this space? Yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that I always uh, get opportunity to uh, share uh, my stories uh, openly and honestly, why I'm really open to uh, share and have no problem sharing my stories because I found uh, sharing by sharing story is a natural healing yeah it's a way of natural healing especially for those people who are unable to really find uh, a way to um, communicate their feelings uh, in other way so sharing is caring sharing is healing and yes, back again to your question. Uh, how do I end up? <laughs> what calling me to uh, dedicating my life, um, taking care of children and women? I believe in every great things or good things people do for a good cause. There's always story behind. So do my myself. So do I. <laughs> I I started with um, when I was born. Uh, I was born in South Sulawesi, another island of Indonesia. My parents, my family originally come from Bali. And when too many population of Indonesia, for those, uh, I'm sharing uh, from the beginning because um, I know that many people who don't know me uh, outside or maybe abroad also would like to uh, learn more the detail. So I'm sharing from the beginning I came from. Uh, we are originally from Bali and uh, too many population in Indonesia uh, makes government gave uh, free land uh, in many different islands of Indonesia for the, the Indonesian citizen. And my grandparents choose South Sulawesi uh, as the base. 
uh, was in the 60s, they transmigrated, followed, uh, followed by my parents a few years later. And I was born in the jungle together with my siblings. And uh, financial struggles, um, in the end, uh, forced my parents uh, planned and tried to move back to Bali, to come back, come back to Bali again. And it happened. Uh, arrived in Bali, um, hardly survive, made my parents uh, placed me, placing me in few different uh, regions around Bali, as well as my siblings. So my life, my childhood was uh, a lot of nomad. Till my grand uncle, the younger, the younger brother of my granny, uh, took me and raised me up since um, after a few years moving around. But um, growing. Uh, without my parents triggered me to commit suicide myself when I was 10. I know it's very young, but I was kind of uh, a child who got frustrated easily. When I knew I wasn't like lucky enough as a child without, without parent and living in a family compound like uh, a common uh, Balinese children. So that was the first, uh, the first uh, challenge when I was child. Then the second, the second challenge was when finally um, I and siblings as well as my parents uh, able to reunite. We built a bamboo hut, <laughs> bamboo hut in the jungle for those people who are not in a financial uh, struggles. Bamboo hut is a heaven, yeah? <laughs> it's a heaven, but for us, for us or for those people who financially struggle or economically struggle, it's, it's not a privilege, I could say. So I felt that and the challenge I'm talking about uh, was, not, was not because of the bamboo hut itself, but, but because the neighbor, the neighbor came to my dad and tried or uh, wanted to sell sell me and my sibling my sister uh, to uh, someone to, uh, some some people um, because they thought the neighbor thought uh, it was the easiest or the best way to get money for our study and um, yeah, that's that was hard. Um, yeah, this is um, this is something that's not always easy when when you've been in a hardest uh, time, the challenge. It's it's yet uh, healing uh, properly, you know. I appreciate it. If we move back again to, if we bring our, our emotion again into mm -hmm. that, that moment. Appreciate it, take your time. So, so the second time I, I triggered uh, committed suicide again when I was when I was fifteen. 
um this is honestly uh, still um gives me tears i mean because because if i remember again i couldn't i couldn't respond couldn't respond all those the action or behaviors uh, of others towards me and my family because of property property can make people uh, have no uh self-esteem in the society and as well as no respect so people look up and down on us it's also because when when we were in Sulawesi, my parent also was not even purchase salt <laughs> because of yeah this the uh, financial struggle. So I failed, I failed for the second time to end my life. And um, the next challenge um, designed by the universe, <laughs> when, I, when I got married was in such a young age had no experience in any relationship, uh, had no opportunity to broaden my horizon. So I could not expect it myself to know how, how to respond again when all those uh, unpleasant unpleasant feelings are given by people towards me. So another another few times during the marriage, um, I tried again to end my life. But I could I could share that I wasn't smart enough. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to to, yeah, to move from this earth to the heaven. <laughs> so, because I always, I was always end up in hospital, <laughs> open, <laughs> open my, my eyes in the hospital, in the hospital, and yeah, then, then I just swear to myself, fuck, <laughs> shit. Why, why I end up, end up again, uh, open my eyes in, in the earth, <laughs> not, not in the, in the heaven or on, uh, or uh, in the hell, you know. <laughs> so, I, I end up, I end up, um, got divorced. And I had to leave, leave my daughter when she was only eight months. That was, yeah, that was another, another hard, hardest time. Even much harder um, compared to um, the other 
before I got married. Because I had to leave, because I had to leave my blood, part of my blood, with my ex-husband. Um, for you who don't know, we have a patriarchy uh, society where we have to leave our child with our husband, with a husband, uh, when we got divorced. And I went back, I went back to my family and I'm, I'm so grateful to have my family, my parents who love me dearly, who always, always by my side. But they love me, but at the same time, of course, um, they got pain, they hurt, they got pain a lot. And I, I did my very first time what people doing uh, right now lockdown <laughs> my first lockdown when i got divorced and i'm glad that i'm doing my second lockdown uh, not <laughs> alone <laughs> because because not only with the balinese community but also all people around the world uh, in my second lockdown but i did uh, my first lockdown by myself um in the room for a few months until again my mom my mom my mom was the key the key of my strength and my weakness at the same time and um i opened the border it was because my mom gave me such a strong words Okay, if you not want to continue your life, just kill yourself inside of the room. But before that, you will see my dead body outside. So that was uh, what mom. my mom said. Yeah, I know my mom is such a strong, strong woman, um, hard worker, and oh, everything. So that was um of course the yeah really touch yeah really touch and it's like a knife or a hammer you know <laughs> not a knife a hammer yeah a hammer okay bang 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 okay wake up and uh, yeah finally i decided to decided to um, open my border and promise to her I will face whatever comes next. Then I continue my life. I thought challenge end. <laughs> um, challenge is never end. <laughs> so when uh, I gain my weight, um, because my I, I lost uh, weight a lot uh, from 53 to 35. That was wow. a lot. It's totally the opposite. I used to cut my long hair uh, with a knife, like big knife, whenever whenever I felt uh, stressed, uh, depressed, frustrated. I just I just cut my 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 hair instead instead throwing things or any other objects or, or stuff so i finally gained my weight um, and promised to my my mom i will I, I will move forward and the last challenge came the last challenge um in my first uh, first pace or my first journey men men whoever whoever heard about a beautiful divorce 
um, pretty di divorced. Um, pretty, pretty for a local guy means uh, chubby. I mean, not really chubby. <laughs> Um, um, a great proportion um, of a uh, physical physical look yeah and also um, yeah uh, face or whatever so all those physical look so they they came one by one to me and even ask my price how much you per night and some of them even came with cars, with uh, all those, their wealth and all those jewelry um, to offer, to offer to me, um, to get me sleep with them. Um, because they thought I I'm easy going, you know. And of course, the more, the more men came to me, the more, uh, partner of them or wives and girlfriends um, got a blind jealousy. You can imagine when you blind, um, yeah, got blind jealousy, you just cannot see anything. So some of the women and go even spit on me. Um, when I pass, pass in front of them and that was like yeah wow i just could un could not understand um why people so so unrespectful just because of being divorced and also property and all those things. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's appreciated. Took your time. Yeah, actually, actually, it has been, it has been years. <laughs> Not to uh, get uh, space to to do this uh, tears uh, purification. Uh, I appreciate it. I think this is how we met. So your space is yours. <laughs> Go ahead. So in the end, I realize when many people gossiping, when many people uh, not nice to me, I realize I was not not in a healthy environment. So I decided to broken my mom's rules uh, became a stubborn daughter <laughs> why i i said stubborn because my mom always wants to uh wanted to keep me just in the village and i didn't know why but now i can, i could share when when the anxiety, the anxiety, too much anxiety, it's create um, rules uh, in terms of uh, protection. So this is actually the cycles uh, when you have so much uh, pain and um, yeah, challenge in your life as well as my mom. So I broke up my mom's rules. I I move away from the village and I continue my study in university and became a teacher. Um, to be honest, I studied, uh, my study was just an excuse. 
because I couldn't find any best way uh, to keep myself uh, busy, um, to not think of my my own daughter for a while, uh, which I couldn't see, I couldn't raise my own and not think of anyone who look up and down on me who not nice to me so i just kept my busy myself by being busy with uh, studying in university and as well at the same time i also working um yeah i just kept myself busy uh, uh with work and study and Honestly, it, it works. Um, it works to help myself able to uh, lay down uh, during the evening. And yeah, because my, uh, I, I got tired physically. So yeah, but it didn't, it didn't heal, heal properly uh, what the, 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 the root of the pain until until I met until I met many different women who struggles with many different challenges not only divorced women uh, women having fertility issues um, single mom single moms here means having babies but no married and also some mothers who have children and adult with special needs. Transgender, I met many. Um, women who uh, challenge uh, having struggles uh, with uh, sexual illness and um, yeah, many, many different challenges of women I met and the more i met those women the more i realized oh my god ah, this is a lot and i could not understand why um i i met those women it's like yeah i i felt like my energy was very attractive it's just like attract more and more women who struggles and they they share their stories even without even um, know each other you know <laughs> i i could I, I could not understand why but one thing one thing in the end came in my head how can those women come together and sit together, let them know they are not the only one uh, with issues or challenged. And of course, um, as, I, as I share previously, when I, when I share, excuse me, when I share my stories, I found, I found it's, it's a natural way of healing. So I thought if, if it works for me, it should work for others. So that's the idea cam. I didn't, I didn't think of uh, create a women's circle, women's center, women's shelter, or whatever, whatever people name it or call it. I just, I just want them to be together and look, you are not the only one. <laughs> there, are, there are thousands of women out there but we need to share we need to share one another and when i found that not many people concern about these things for decades uh, and it has been it has been taboo those cases those challenges that i mentioned in those women uh have been taboo to talk here in our society uh, in the Balinese society if we compare to your country like Europe or America or, or, or abroad yeah 
um, we are much, much behind uh, talking about these cases um, in, in Bali. So that was the story, but uh, there's always but, and there's always uh, beautiful, beautiful things um, designed by the universe. But of course, I, I didn't know, and I, I could not understand what comes next in my life. So the universe um, not let me to start the, the women uh, gathering. Uh, instead, the universe thrown me in a school where, where, I, where I was doing my volunteering uh, work in public school, secondary school and elementary school, an English teacher came to me and asked me, would you like to be, would you like to be a teacher for idiot children? What do you mean idiot? Oh <laughs> you, mean, you, mean, you mean mental hospital or what? No, 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 they are, their, their brain are error. Okay, so without, without, um, Thinking too much, I went to the school. I found about five adults with special needs. Uh, this is how people labeling all those uh, children and adults with special needs. So I arrived there. I, I seen them rolling, jumping, uh, uh, crying um, naked. <laughs> and I had, I had no idea what I had to do because I'm not used to a teacher. I'm a teacher, but I'm not used to teach those uh, uh, children and adults with special needs. Um, so I brought, to be honest, my mind to mental hospital exactly because, because when I visited my uncle uh, who was there, who been there for quite a quite, uh, long time, um, so then, so then, I got the idea how to build the trust with those special people. So I just, I just communicate the same. I behave the same. So I'm running, I'm jumping, I'm rolling, I'm crying. Um, but naked, I didn't do, of course. <laughs> only, yeah, sure about that. <laughs> only naked, I didn't do, and also pee pee on on the lunch table. <laughs> before we start lunch. <laughs> um, so I now I believe that nothing is coincidence in this life uh, because my name was exist in that school. So the school called Sari Hati. Sari means essence, Hati means heart. So Sari Hati means essence of the heart. And my name is Sari Adi, means essence of the love, <laughs> essence of the love, <laughs> someone to be loved. So Sari Hati started was uh, in 2003, it was exactly, exactly when I got divorced. So again, I think it's coincidence, my name was exist there. And they started exactly when I, I got divorced. And for, for three years, for first three years, we did our journey moving around because Sari had to move from one places to another places or while myself also uh, was in the hardest time for the, the first three years after divorced. So then uh, we met, uh, we met uh, in 2008. Uh, I ran I ran the school founded by Israel guys with lady and local guys so I ran that without any other team so now we have uh, we have uh, from five uh, children we got now uh, about 40 uh, 40 children and adult from the range age from five years old to 45 with um, mix uh, mix um, special uh, like nasi champur i don't know if everyone know nasi champur <laughs> nasi champur is uh, a mixed dish where where you um, have rice and 
um, vegetables and uh, meat or and other dishes uh, in one plate. So that's we call it a champur. Champur is mix uh, mix of everything. So yeah, um, now we have more or less forty children and adults um, from five years old to forty five years old, and uh, we have uh, about twelve uh, team in total and they are mothers. We have zero, zero staff coming from um, teacher's education background, nor a special children education background, because we believe uh, by empowering and take mothers uh, to be the teachers, uh, it will be, it will be much, uh, um, great you know much better to to lead the children because uh, mothers uh, knows their children that's true. that's true so yeah so that was the, the first uh, the first uh, story where i came from uh, running running sarihati for a um, few years then the women's center the pkp Women Center. So PKP stands for Not Partai Keadilan dan Persatuan, <laughs> not any party or politic, uh, political <laughs> group or something. <laughs> but PKP stands for Pusat Kegiatan Perempuan. Pusat means center, Kegiatan means activities, and Perempuan means uh, women. So. PKP Women's Center created, and we got our first base um, in Tegalala, in Tegalala, and Sarihati got their base in Ubud. Uh, Ten years, uh, Liz finished. Um, now Sarihati uh, moved to a new location and became Kim. Yeah, K-I-M, uh, not Kim Kardashian or Kim Jong-un or other Kim, the Korean uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> movie star. Mm -hmm. So Kim stands for Kasih Inspirasi Mandiri, means uh, Kasih means love, Inspirasi means ins inspirational or inspired, um, Mandiri means independent. So with uh, love and compassion, we would like to inspire others to be independent. Um, but not, yeah, but long before um, Sarihati moved uh, to new location with new uh, name, uh, PKP Women Center had extended extended um, the program to uh, Payangan area. Uh, we um, uh, yeah, brought the program to other area in terms of uh, giving more opportunities for more people in different area. And now we turn into PKP Community Center. Um, from PKP Women's Center, now we turn into PKP Community Center because uh, I could I could put this in in the three anga. Three anga means uh, three part of the body. Uh, three means three anga means body. So and this actually has been formed uh, by our ancestors to get our life balance as well as the three hitakarana, another philosophies. Uh, that we heritage by our ancestors. Uh, three hitakarana means three cost of happiness or joy by taking good care of uh, our relationship between human to God. Uh, we call it parahyangan and human to human, tawongan, human to nature, palemahan. So by uh, taking good care of this relationship, it will be create 
the balanced. When the balance created, it will be create the happiness, the joy. As well as, thank you. As well as the three anga, three anga, three part of the body. So I started even the idea, the idea if 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 I put this on our body again, even the idea uh, for came firstly, uh, I would like to focus on the neck, which is the woman. But the universe, the universe uh, lead me to start with the feet, which is the children. And then I, I finally, finally can move, move to uh, the neck, which is the women. And now we complete, complete the head, the men, the boys, and the rest the rest of the family members of the women and children. It's exactly, I don't know if, if you know Garuda Wisnu Kanchana, uh, down, yeah, in, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, down in Uluwatu. It's for a long time, the head been not placed <laughs> because it's not easy, because it's not easy to place the head to, <laughs> to complete the three anga. Because the three anga is always um, involved with the, the asta kosala kosali, uh, the rules of uh, architecture uh, in Bali. So we also finally complete the head because we can put, I myself can put this like a computer and CPU, yeah, <laughs> the PC. <laughs> so the head, the head is the monitor and the neck is the CPU, the central processing unit, where this takes very important roles. The women takes very important roles in the Balinese society. The bridge, the strength, um, the ideas, if we if we relating this to our medical services, it's um, we can we can definitely uh, understand logically if something happened to the head, it's not really affect the neck. But if it the opposite, you can imagine if you get a, a sore throat or or you unable to really express uh, anything, uh, your voice, it's, it's really, it's really affect the whole system, isn't it? So this is, this is why I, I was really focused on the neck, how to help women to understand their situation themselves deeper and better because because if they don't understand how to treat themselves and if others also doesn't understand the the society that doesn't understand to treat women this neck this women it can be turned into durga into kali Durga or Kali is uh, the scary image in our, our Hindu uh, belief. But if the neck treated uh, nicely, it can be turned the opposite. The Devi, the Parvati, the goddess, the beauty. So I could put this uh, easily to understand if it turns not nicely, it can turn into the hell. <laughs> or <laughs> treat nicely, turn into the heaven. So I think yeah. uh, anyone with a mother would know that uh, when the mom at home is not happy, uh, it's pretty hellish at home. And when she's really happy, everybody is happy. So I, I totally relate to that. Go on. Exactly, exactly. So um, yeah, but again, I, I started I started the idea with the neck uh, to give 
to give opportunity for the women to understand uh, where they are, where their position, how their circumstance, how their situation, um, uh, what is their roles in the Balinese society, in the Balinese compound. Because unfortunately, we've been, we've been follow, uh, follow the kingdom society, the kingdom system, where women used to treat treat like uh, slaves, you know, uh, they're not uh, um, allowed to express because this is the chakra of expression. So if we cannot express, you can imagine uh, how it could be. So anyway, that's, um, that's the story behind. So now we finally complete, complete the three anga uh by enlarge our uh, activities our program into a community mm. So. Mm. wow no that's a that's a very extensive uh, and uh important story Ibusari, and i hope uh, you know because we have less time uh to go into other type of curious questions but uh, i feel for the audience and for us and this channel tribe stories i think you know someone like you with such an extensive mission it's not hard to see once we go into the genesis of something as to what keeps you going because i've worked with you a little little while to see your struggles and the ones you continue to to go through and always ask myself what makes this woman keep going and overcome and it's just a really great story i think for everyone to see that you know behind every mission or, or passion some people have in community there's always a personal story that's driving that so i think everyone will appreciate the cultural background the history of you the pkp genesis the ibusari story and your own personal struggles and i'm sure not just women but sons of mothers can really deeply appreciate the effort and the importance of the neck as you call it and uh, so that's really cool. So I'm just curious about a lot of things you said, and I took some notes. So I might piece a few questions together just to expand further on, on what you shared, which I appreciate. Is, you know, if you look at that whole journey up to where you are now, and I'm sure we'll have a few more episodes to discuss what you're currently doing, because I think this is another uh, episode for itself. But what are the lessons maybe you feel you have learned from your past that maybe you would love the audience to know about, which can help, which is helping your life now. Just in summary, a few lessons that you've learned from your past story that you shared and what maybe, how do they help you in your life today? I think I always believe that whatever, whatever journey we went through or we go through, whatever challenges, yeah, now I, I call, I love, not I love, I, I always say uh, all the pain, all the struggles, uh, all the challenges is my great uh, fertilizer. Fertilizer if I was a plant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think everyone could understand the plant grows because of great fertilizer. Uh, the poo poo of <laughs> the cows, <laughs> all those the organic things. So this is also this is also how the life is. We organically uh, got the challenge uh, to help us grow uh, and get our strength and find our way. Um, one thing that I've learned is how to uh, to make myself happy happy no matter what my situation was because because no one could uh, help you no one can uh, um, make you happy only yourself and then i learned how to be uh, alpha afa <laughs> i think i think this is coming from uh, my life journey um, was born in the jungle, grew up in the jungle. Now I'm back again to the jungle. <laughs> and uh, this led me to 
follow nature way valley time <laughs> slowly but surely even many times not sure but b alpha <laughs> b alpha afa uh, this is my acronym that i i put um, recently so if to motivate yourself you need to be alpha yeah? adaptable flexible adjustable no matter okay. no matter yeah no matter what situation uh, no, uh, you go through uh, you need to be alpha because especially uh, being in bali or live in bali uh, you cannot really really force yourself you need to be adaptable flexible adjustable and i found the best way to create a road of life map is through uh, getting the three E's. <laughs> getting the three E's. Um, three E's, this is the rules of the center. Uh, three yeah. E's are, yeah, everybody is a teacher. Every place is a, sec, uh, a school and every moment is a lesson. So wherever you go, let yourself uh, meet as many people as you could, go to many different places and experience many different situations and always see, see challenge, even hard, even the worst situation is your great fertilizer which will help Makes you sense. grow grow and uh, help yourself to see yourself better and deeper then you mm. can understand others you can understand others uh, by not judging others easily because this is also something that has been formed in our principle our philosophies here in the balinese culture Balinese um, uh, society, uh, tatuam asi. Tatuam asi means we are one. You are me. I'm you. Uh, uh. So the more you understand yourself and better and deeper, the more you understand others. Why others uh, behave not nice to you? Why others uh, judging you? Why others? All those why. Uh, uh. And also another thing that I've learned, if you really would like to see what you are doing, what you are learning, you need to keep the three P's. Mm. <laughs> three P's are your passion, your patience, and your perseverance. Your heart and mind need to be aligned, trust the process, and keep on going do not stop mm. then you will see a result and do not take it or leave it a uh, principle but when the result not pleasant take a little bit more time because i believe we born with our soul mate not in a specific relationship i i'm talking about but someone we can listen to, a place we can listen to, an experience we can listen to when we are in uncomfortable zone or in a challenge, which help us move forward and find, find a motivation. I like that, and I really like that. Are you have one more, go ahead. Yeah, and, and again, if, if talk about all those my my life journey i'm not doing something new but i'm doing cpi copy paste mm. improvise mm. Mm. <laughs> so i copy paste all those great things heritage by our ancestors all those great things designed by the universe but what we human being can do is always see the beauty within the challenge in every single journey of our life yeah. because if we if we only focus on those negative side then 
everything will be it uh, all the grief will be arise mm -hmm. then the grief arise when the grief above the level of a happy then everything will be blind with what you said about some of the challenges that you've had it's really important for people to see how you overcome them and come up with these acronyms to help you process because even during the pandemic some people had difficulties and some people don't actually see them as fertilizers so i think it's a really important thing for people to hear uh just on another note uh, on the opposite side i mean after all these challenges or obstacles and the suicide you know which is extraordinary you've actually for someone in a short period of time accomplished so much not just for yourself as a person to overcome but also the impact I've seen personally of what you've done in the community it's been really phenomenal so this is one thing for me to say but maybe the question i had for you is what are you most proud of out of all the accomplishments that you've had in your life and why if talking about proud i i'm proud with everything but the mo most proud of myself is uh have such a amazing gift which is energy energy given by the universe and i'm grateful because i'm allowing myself to turn all those challenges into a meaningful work not only for myself but also for others as well as giving opportunities for everyone to get uh, to participate in multiple programs that we have been running at the center to give them opportunity to uh, get their uh, financial sustainability as well as growth because because we are doing exactly uh, follow the Maslow's hierarchy in our in our work. So we give everything to the society to balance to balance the, this um, uh, energy uh, as well as um, those people who uh, lacked of opportunity because again one last thing that I did not mention before is to succeed things we need the wow <laughs> w a o I know that peop many people willing to do things so w stand for uh, willingness I believe they able to a stand for ability then we create and give this o the opportunity the opportunity to meet many people the opportunity go to many different places the opportunity to experience many different situations uh, uh. so again i'm proud i'm proud of myself because uh this energy has been uh never lies yeah i always believe so much with energy energy of being kind energy of being uh compassion and energy of uh being grateful of these amazing things around us what uh, the universe or the nature providing for us even in this uncertain time there are so much great things uh, given uh, by the universe mm. i really like that that's, uh, that's i like the wow too i think a lot of people even who don't know you know wow and they don't know where it came from um but just a few final questions i guess uh and we'll definitely get you back on the session to explore more but a uh, question i had in my mind were like you know if you're younger with all the lessons and all the acronyms you've now come to appreciate and follow 
what advice maybe would you give your younger self about who the woman you have become today? What advice would you give the person that tried to maybe commit suicide uh, the first time at 10? What would you say to her that might maybe support her if you were to be able to reverse time? What would you say? Have curiosity. <laughs> what do you mean? Because, because by having curiosity, you will, you will allow in yourself, you will give motivation to yourself to go and meet many people. Again, back again to the three E's. Go and meet many people, go to many different places, explore, explore yourself and experience, experience many different situations. Because this is my experience. This is also why, why now we create this, this opportunity for the young people, not only for women, for the young people, the children, everyone. Because by having curiosity, you will, you will always uh, ask more. You have, you, you, will, you will have a strong motivation to develop yourself. Go out, don't just stay in the box. Because you wouldn't see anything if you sit and stay in the box. There are many beautiful things you can do. There are many opportunities and possibilities out there. There are many great people that you can learn from. But remember to always come back, to always come back and build your own community and make your life joyful and meaningful. Mm, that's powerful. So that's really beautiful. I really appreciate that. So just a couple of things on uh, how people can reach you and maybe learn more. So do you guys use like a, is there a website or you have an Instagram or Facebook page where people can uh, actually reach you and uh, connect and maybe support your, your projects? Yes, definitely. Uh, if I know we came from the jungle. <laughs> we, also, <laughs> we also know that people would like to connect or reconnecting. This is the amazing things of, especially, especially now in this Corona time, there are so many great things uh, within these challenges. So if for you who would like to know more about us, please visit our website on www pkpcommunitycenter.org. I can written down here on the chat and um, Aaron can help us to, to link uh, our website to get information. And also we do have Instagram, uh, which now I'm so happy get uh, great teams who can update, uh, update um, our activities on Instagram because Ibu Sari is a jungle woman, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not used to uh, uh, operate all these digital thingy thingy things. So instead, um, yeah, um, I just um, let the young people uh, do their, uh, their skills um, uh, on these uh, digital things. So, but for you, that. but for you, for you who live in Bali um, a long time or recently, so please, please do visit us uh, in the jungle. And I promise you, you won't regret. <laughs> you won't regret coming to the jungle because there are much more things you can, you can learn and share mm. as well as, as well as, um, you will understand more by doing laugh, look, ask, and feel in our jungle. Because I believe the more you experience uh, uh, directly, 
be in our jungle uh, interact interacting with uh, uh, connect connect with our people in the jungle you will uh, understand how how to support uh, yeah. our program yeah, and we do also have and we do also have a menu we call it menu list of pkp needs that, that you can consider uh, which program you would like to support how you can support so we will definitely send you uh, if you would like to yeah, definitely and I'm personally there quite often and I can see for myself from the coconut project to well-being products like coconut oil teas and the soaps the natural organic soaps and just the whole experience just a few final questions but before I ask them uh it was Harry, I'd love to acknowledge you for uh, not just the extraordinary beautiful heart that you have and how you brought that into existence but I think also from the perseverance and the the decision you made not to take your life too often enough that you were unsuccessful which was great but you started having a relationship with turning it into fertilizer so that you can give other people the opportunity for them to share their stories share their suffering and get that healing and i think in a lot of societies not just in indonesia or bali but there's so many traditional cultures that greatly greatly i know will benefit from the fact that they can point at least to one person called the Ibu Sari on the other side of the world for the example. So just wanted to say really honor you for your efforts, your perseverance, your consistency, and most importantly for just being a role model for so many women and men uh, who are looking out for some options of how they can overcome adversity. So just wanted to really acknowledge you for that and you're so such an inspiring person not just to the people but to myself personally um so yeah just wanted to share that but last three questions for you um two one two questions uh, i wanted you maybe quickly just to imagine uh that everything you've done pkp women's center all your projects that have been extraordinary in the world have all basically finished and you can't take anything with you to the next life but the only thing left now is you've got a pen and paper and you're asked by the universe to leave three short lessons for the rest of the universe to remember you by. What would those three things be? The first one is kindness. The second one is um, workaholic. <laughs> Because I do, I do, um, yeah, I, I could, I could say that I, I cannot sleep almost 24 hours, so my brain, <laughs> because I keep, I keep uh, thinking how I can create more Ibusari in the future. <laughs> and then the third one um, is um, a positive energy our motivation um, always need to be bring uh, in in your uh, circumstance or society or friendship or whatever in in, in the environment so yeah i like that i like that okay and final question what do you define as someone in your inner tribe like your inner circle how do you define that uh, for you as these are people you can trust in your inner circle and who might they be maybe top three people like for example people you could uh, share your feelings with like maybe um, uh, if i may have the privilege sometimes you might be so busy helping other people but somewhere you could go to and feel supported or someone can hold space for you and you can rely on these people mm -hmm. for your healing yeah because as entrepreneurs and leaders out there we're constantly trying to solve other people's problems, but we also need our own inner tribe of where we can go. So how would you define that type of group of small people that you can rely on? And also uh, who might be those top three people that you can think of in your life that have been in your inner tribe that have been there to support you? Okay. So first of all is 
of course, number one is yourself. <laughs> and then the second one is your family. And then the third one is your team. And the third one also including your uh, society. Because because this is again, I I could put my my uh, my fingers like this. It's always a triangle, yeah. So yourself is the center, and then your family and communities. Communities is including your team, your friends, uh, your neighbor or whoever uh, around you. Because because again. If only you understand what you are doing, not your family or your community, you could not move forward uh, or change anything, isn't it? Also, if only only the community that you working with or you help with understand, and not your family, it can be also against your <laughs> your efforts. Correct. So this three, three triangle, yeah, need to ba uh, balance again. And if we if we talk about about um, uh, working together, if you already start uh, clearly what you are going to do and you're passionate about it will be always come back to the energy um, cycles. It will be spread uh, around you, to your family and your community or, or your team. Yeah, so uh, Busari, we'll, we'll close it here, but say thank you again for the amazing time, the interview. And this is probably one of the, the interviews that I've done where I think someone really gave a good definition of how they got to become who they are. And uh, this is really, really insightful for people looking to engage and become another leader of tomorrow. So thank you very much for that opportunity. And uh, yeah, you. appreciate your time. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Thank Thanks. you. Hopefully, hopefully um, this uh, will be uh, inspired and uh, keep spread around. Yeah, to yeah. create more and more people who are doing great things in their community. Thank yeah, you. Trunk Builders. Thank you very much.